Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing really well, staying safe out there. And if you're new here, my name is Jim. It's great to meet you. Thanks for coming by. I make tutorial videos every week here on YouTube, showing you how I edit my photos using different tools. And I'm always looking for creative angles and different ways to use the tools. And just basically, I'm trying to figure out how do I get what I want out of a photo by using these tools. And you know, when you experiment enough and play around with it enough, it becomes quite easy. Um, but there's always new things and different things and, and interesting things you can do, and that's the fun of it. And today I'm in Luminar 4, and I've got a photo that was a street scene taken in southern France uh, a few years ago. And I was out at sunrise, it was okay looking. Let me just show you the photo. Here it is. I absolutely adore street photos like this, like cityscapes in the wee hours of the morning or maybe later at night when, you know, maybe it's a little bit of blue hour. Um, the thing I don't like though is the sky was just totally blue and there was nothing there. So sunrise was a bust, for lack of a better word, which is one of the reasons I like blue hour. Blue hour is pretty much always blue, but sunrise or sunset is not really always going to be um, productive, let's say. Anyway, um, the thing I don't like is, apart from the sky, is I don't really like the yellow greenish kind of hue to these yellow tones. And these lights, like those that show up in these uh, city streets, are just terrible, to be honest. I, I dislike that color. It's kind of a fuchsia, yeah, yellow, whatever. It's pukey, I don't like it. So I wanted to change that, I wanted a new sky. Here I used AI tools, I used masking, I used layers, I used a look. I did a lot of different things to get to my final result. That's my final result. I really wanted to shift the color tones, I wanted a new sky, um, and I wanted to do a whole lot of things. So let me reset it and walk through how I went from this photo to that photo. Okay, here we are, base unedited photo. Uh, no change in the before and after because I haven't done anything. So when I know I'm gonna replace the sky, I do that first. So I'm popping over here to the creative tab. I'm gonna get AI sky replacement. I'm gonna click sky selection and I'm gonna go get a custom sky. Okay, and I've got a Luminar Marketplace uh, sky pack called California Sunsets. Uh, I'll put a link down below to the marketplace. You can get $10 off using Easy Sky Replacement 10 as a code. I shared that in a previous video. I wanted to bring that up again. I'm gonna use this Santa Rosa Sunset and just click OK and then it pops it in there. And I, I just love the sky replacement tool. I gotta do a little bit of blending here. Uh, my sky position is like a negative five. I scoot that a little bit. Let's see, relight, global, everything else is the same. So there we go. My sky is in place and that's how easy and quick it is with Luminar and I just adore that feature. I'm sure you do as well. So here we go. Now, after I do that, I usually go over to the light tool and get started. So I'm gonna start with temperature and here I go kind of blue. I'm going to negative 38. And for tint, I'm gonna go with a 13. There we go. And so this is where um, I always start with a uh, light tool, especially after uh, doing a sky, because once I have the new sky in, this is where I'm starting to blend and make the colors kind of work for me. And of course, the new sky, you wanna make sure that it kind of matches up, like thematically, like the theme fits, and of course the colors fit. So that's kind of what I'm working on. Um, next, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna give it some smart contrast. I'm gonna give that like a 32, if I can click on that, there we go. And the highlights, I'm gonna take down that is a negative 15, so there we go. Okay, now I'm getting into the AI fun here. So the first thing is AI accent, and there I'm going about 18. And then I'm also gonna use AI sky enhancer, and there I'm going about 33. So that acts a little bit like a polarizing filter, so this AI enhance tool with the two different sliders in it took me from that to that. The AI accent kind of brightens those darker areas, and of course the AI sky enhancer added a little bit of a polarization effect to the sky. Next is AI structure, and here I'm going about 37, trying to give it a little bit of pop, uh, a little bit of crunch, and I feel like it gives it a little bit more depth. Um, it's kind of a little bit like giving a little bit of detail pop as well, so I think it gives it a nice little you know, oomph to the photo. I don't wanna go too high, like I don't wanna go like that where it gets really crunchy. Uh, I would think I was at 37, I'm gonna go back to that. Just a little bit there, and just to, just to give it a little bit of pop. Okay, next is color, and this is where I really wanna work on those uh, yellowy fuchsia, whatever that color is, I don't even know what it's called, I just don't like it. Um, so I'm gonna get over here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the oranges, and I'm gonna start with a hue, and I'm gonna go negative on this hue. I'm gonna say negative 16, and so that's the first step. 
then my saturation is going to come down as well and that's going to be a negative 37 so i'm just pulling down the uh the saturation and also the hue i'm taking if you look at the hue slider here in the orange to the right it's more of that yellowy green kind of that color i don't like so that's why i'm going to the left where it's a little bit more in the true orange kind of red uh, and then i'm going to go do something similar in yellow because that's really going to impact uh, this area here with the street lights so for hue here i'm going to go negative 27. let me do that boom you can see that's impacted that color a bit and then the saturation i'm going to bring that down quite a bit i'm going to say negative 49. there we go that's looking a bit better to me it's a little bit tamer but i'm going to adjust that and give it a little bit of pop later but i've been able with the color tool here just to go from that which is way too that greenish fuchsia yellowy whatever color i don't know what you call it to that which i basically tamed it and i think it looks a lot better okay now i'm popping back over to the creative tab and here i'm going to go to mystical and i'm going to do like a 40 or 41 just to give it some of that moody romantic kind of shadow that's something i like to play up in these kind of street scenes if you missed this recent video about romantic lighting i talk about that quite a bit in that video um, and then I go over to Orton and here I'm going to give that about a 23 so 23 um, and you can see I'm creating that shadow look and basically if you look at the before photo and the after photo I've got a little bit more moody romantic lighting I've got a little bit better control of the colors those orangey yellows especially that yellowy fuchsia kind of color and I've also got a new sky and that's kind of what I've been doing here so there's the before and the after i like where i am uh, i'm not done though i'm going to pop now over to adjustable gradient one of my favorite tools in luminar um, i'm just going to leave the orientation right there in the middle right i'm not going to change that because there's not like a clear horizon so i'm going to make a couple of moves in both uh, i'm going to start start with a negative 12 on the warmth for the top so basically i cool it off a little bit uh, and that's it for top and then on bottom i gotta look at my notes uh, the warmth here i'm going to say negative 59 so it's pretty significant um, but as you can see that cools off that's also a counterbalance to some of those orange yellow tones that are fairly dominant in the photo if you remember the base photo really dominant with that warmer tone especially in the bottom half where uh, that light is kind of flooding the street and now i've got a lot more control over that with the color moves i did along with this temperature adjustment uh, and i'm going to take vibrance up i'm going to give it a little bit of pop here I'm gonna give that like a 32. These numbers just can't, I came to by experimentation. I'm not saying, hey, always do a negative 59 on warmth or a positive 32 on vibrance. It was pure just experimentation. What I was going for was how do I control the light and the colors and the tones in the street scene? Uh, because the sky is a small sliver of this, right? I replace the sky, I like that. But how do I go from that kind of, not looking at the sky, just looking at the rest of it. How do I go from that to that? And it was pure experimentation so just take it, this all with a grain of salt these are tools that i use and that i like to use to walk through this kind of workflow idea but the actual uh, not percentages but the actual numbers and the amounts they're going to vary photo to photo okay so here i am there's the before and the after i'm pretty okay with this base layer now i'm going to go get an adjustment layer and start making some additional edits let me get over here to the um the essentials tab i'm going to start with ai structure and in this case, I'm gonna go negative 61. You can probably guess what I'm doing here. Uh, and the boost, I'm gonna give it like an 18. 18, let me check my notes, yeah. Um, now I'm gonna say mask, I'm gonna say brush, and I've, I'm, I'm in paint, and I'm gonna just paint that into the sky because all I'm doing is trying to smooth out that sky and give it a little bit softer look. I do that on a lot of photos with skies. And I'm just going over that stuff that's hanging across the sky. Um, it's such a small part of the photo that I don't think anyone will notice. So there we go. So I've painted that in, and now I'm going to say mask and copy um, because I'm going to use that again. So basically take a negative structure and a boost and painted it into the sky. And now that I've copied it, I'm going to go over to color, and I'm going to take this blue saturation down a little bit. You can imagine what I'm about to do. I'm gonna pull down the blues. Uh, I'm gonna increase the luminance of the blue. In other words, make it brighter. Um, and then the saturation of the pink, I'm also gonna take down uh, about a negative 20. I just felt like the colors in that sky were a little too much. And now that I've got those 
figures in place. I'm gonna say mask, I'm, I'm going to the brush mask, and now I'm gonna say paste. And basically, those edits are gonna, are gonna be applied uh, with the same mask that I used on AI structure. So this layer was basically about softening the sky and reducing the intensity of the colors in the sky. Let me show you that before. There's the sky before, a little bit more pink, a little bit more blue, a little bit more, uh, I don't wanna say structure, but not as smooth. And now I reduced the color intensity for both the blues and the pinks. And I used, uh, and I also increased the, the luminance value of the blue. So I made the blue brighter. Um, and then I also softened it up, right? So that's what I did there. I could have uh, added the negative structure and the color adjustments and then masked it on the layer. In this case, I happened to do it uh, filter by filter because I did structure first. And after I did the structure, I realized I wanted to bring down the saturation. So you can really do it either way. I did it here at the filter level or tool level and then copied it. Or I could have done both adjustments and then come over here and just masked it once with the adjustment layer mask. Okay, now uh, that's some color work, some smoothing work. I'm gonna go get a new adjustment layer. In this case, I'm gonna get a, a look that I've been building and experimenting with. So I'm gonna go into custom user looks and I'm gonna go over here to this Twilight One uh, and I'm gonna say, close the looks panel and it's gonna uh, apply that look across the entire photo. And immediately you're gonna be like, oh my God, Jim, weren't you just reducing saturation? And I was, but this is where luminosity masking comes in. So I talk about luminosity masking a lot. It's a great, absolutely powerful, amazing tool to have. And it allows you to create a mask based on luminance or brightness or exposure values. So I'm gonna hit luminosity mask. And what it'll do is it'll apply all these edits more heavily to the brighter parts of the photo and less heavily to the darker parts of the photo. So give that a minute to build the mask and apply and you'll see a massive difference in the photo. Okay, and there you go with the luminosity mask applied to that layer with a look that's also applied to that layer. So if you remember, it was really kind of garish, over the top, kind of the clown vomity kind of colors. Um, but with the luminosity mask, it's much more subtle. So there's my photo before this layer. And now here's this look applied with the luminosity mask on the layer, much more subtle than uh, the previous, uh, you know, just the look without the luminosity mask. And that's the power of luminosity mask. I love to use them. So I, I do this a lot in my experimentation where I will apply a look and I might say, oh my gosh, that's really kind of crazy over the top. And then you go apply it with the luminosity mask and you end up with something like this, which is colorful and nice and I think looks quite good. Now, the other thing too is some of the colors, because they come in the brighter areas, let me show you this. Here's the luminosity mask. The brighter areas are like these windows and some of the reflection of the light on the building and of course the sky. So I like that. That's where more of the color of that look went. And I think it does a good job of uh, kind of balancing out the photo because I think before, let me turn that off again, it was a little too unsaturated for me. I do like my colors, so I have a bias in that direction. But using a look with a luminosity mask to me is just the right amount. And by the way, if you feel like it's too much even after that, you can take the adjustment slider down and so you could drag it down and just reduce the intensity of the look on the luminosity mask on this layer by using that adjustment amount slider for the layer. I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna leave it at 100 because I like it, but that's something to keep in mind. Now I've got a couple of touch up edits and that's gonna be a new adjustment layer. And that's because that previous adjustment layer too, um, right here, that had the look with the luminosity mask um, on that layer. So I don't wanna make any adjustments there because they're only gonna apply really more heavily in the luminosity mask. These are gonna be more global. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go get color and I'm gonna say blue and I'm gonna take the saturation of the blue down to negative 74. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint that. I'm gonna get the brush and paint and I'm gonna paint that reduction right here into these buildings because some of my moves have really created a really blue look in that building um, in the distance and I don't wanna do that. So I just painted the negative blue right there. So very minor adjustment. But if I turn that off and you look at that area, you can see, I mean, those buildings are really blue. And this is something to think about when you're editing. Um, look at the colors in all the different areas and pay attention to that because, and I've done this tons of times, so I'm speaking from experience, where I'll have colors, I'm like, God, oh, it's great, it's so awesome. But then later I might look at it and think, ooh, those buildings are really blue. And if you look at the base photo, buildings are not blue. Sky's blue, and I replaced the sky with blue and pink in it, but the buildings are not blue. I don't want them to be blue. So if I don't come back and do this, 
like that, they'd stay blue. So just pay attention to these small details. Um, and then lastly, I've just got a vignette. So I'm gonna come in here and the amount is gonna be a negative 43 and the size is gonna be a 16. So there we go. I've just taken the vignette and I'm not really placing the center. I don't feel like I need to. The center of the photo is basically straight down the street there and I'm happy with that look on the photo. So I'm, I'm content with that. My roundness, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna make it more round, so about a 58. And um, I'm gonna leave feathering alone, but I am gonna give it some inner light of about 24. And that just brightens up the center of the vignette, which to me works well because the street, there's lights on it. That's where I want the focus of the viewer's eye to go is just follow these lines, right? Um, I always do this, not always, but I do this a lot when I'm shooting streets is I look for these kind of lines like in the street and I use that to kind of direct the viewer's attention. And then on top of that, if I add a little bit of this inner light at the end, let me show you the before the vignette. There you go, a little bit darker there, a little bit brighter on the edges, and the opposite is true now. And of course, you can adjust this if you want to. But having done these moves, I think, helps direct the viewer down the street. And frankly, because it's a city street that you're looking down, I want you to have full visibility down the street. I don't care so much about some of the outer stuff, like the shop window over here on the right or the shop window on the left. You know, you can change the vignette size and amount if you want to, but pretty happy with it there. Point was just trying to direct the viewer's attention. And that's my full workflow. I'm using AI, I'm using layers, I'm using looks, I'm using masking, both brush masking and luminosity masking. And that allowed me to get a really yellowy green kind of pukey color with no, uh, no fun in the sky, let's face it. Um, but I like the, the shot, I like the idea of the shot. And now I like the colors in the shot, I like the sky. It's just a much better look overall. And by the way, I think um, some of that look that I added, that twilight look that has some pink in it, it adds some pink to these windows and the reflection there. And I think that works well with the pink that was added um, in the sky with those clouds. So one last time, there's before and after. And if you wanna see the difference, I mean, it's pretty substantial. I think we got a much better look to these kind of orangey yellows that are all across the photo. They don't have that greenish yellow tint anymore. And of course, the sky replacement uh, is awesome because that's Luminar 4 for you. That's it for this workflow, my friends. I appreciate you watching. That is the power of Luminar, and I'll be back soon with more videos. So give me a like, give me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you really soon. Thanks for watching. Take care, my friends, and adios.